Uh, our next speaker, uh, Robin Berg, uh, um, an entrepreneur since he was young. He is the youngest uh, board member uh, council of his university. Uh, he uh, introduced uh, the first climate sustainability policy in his university, and he's always looked into opportunities. Uh, he started with an internet company called Lombok.net, partly named after the city he was living in, uh, Lombok, and then moved into solar when he realized there's a lot of potential, as our previous speaker uh, uh, mentioned. And then he thought about why not combine also uh, solar with charging stations. And right now the, uh, the development in, in electric vehicles is going very rapidly. And uh, within the coming years, they want to try to make a cars that can go up to 300 kilometers without having to charge. And those electric cars require charging stations. Our next speaker is working on the world's first uh, solar charging station for electric vehicles. Please welcome on stage Robin Berg, CEO of Lombixnet. Thank you very much. Um, great to be here, great to have the opportunity to tell you something about our project. Um, as mentioned, uh, we started in the Lombok area, it's really close here, you can practically walk to it if you have a, a break or just want to do lunch. It's right at the other side of, uh, uh, of uh, behind these buildings, so it's really close, uh, so you can actually see what we're doing there. Um, my company, Lombok.net, as mentioned, started as an internet company. Uh, we were the first one to roll out a fiber network in the city. And with this network, we now provide almost 4,000 people with uh, fast internet uh, connections in their homes and businesses. Um, but some years ago, we started a new business uh, because, um, as uh, Wim just told you, uh, we also, from an entrepreneur point of view, believe in a very big uh, future for solar. Uh, but we really want to make, uh, at the end, we want to make money out of that in the Dutch market. Um, so what we did is we started with installing solar installations on the roofs of schools in our neighborhood, in the Lombok area, like this one on the gymnasium. Um, but after that, we started to roll out new installations on roofs and schools all over Utrecht. Um, ma mainly primary schools, um, also some installations outside uh, the city in the Utrecht uh, region, uh, like this one. Um, and also some bigger installations, like this one. And as of today, um, we will be building 10 new installations on the roofs of secondary schools. So there will be quite big installations. In total, we are now installing the next month 4,000 solar panels in the Utrecht, uh, on Utrecht schools. Um, so we are scaling it up, um, but we are still not very happy with the business case uh, that's underneath because it's very much subsidy uh, related without subsidy. Um, it's quite hard to do this kind of things in the Dutch market. Uh, so for that, in the Lombok area, we did something, uh, did something new. We built our own microgrid with the solar installations installed. The yellow building, that's the first primary school, the Park School, which we did solar. This is the gymnasium again. The white building, our office. And what we did, we really uh, connected those installations to our office. So we right next to the fiber cable, we put in a, a power cable into the ground and all this solar power is coming to our office. And why did we do that? Because you want to have a living lab to experiment how we can use this solar in a better way. So our, uh, now our complete uh, uh, business runs on our own solar power. But more importantly, the first thing we did after that is we installed a charging station. Um, and this is actually one of the first uh, charging stations in Utrecht. Uh, but it was also the first private charging station in the public space directly powered by solar. Um, those two cars were basically the first full electric cars you could buy in, in, in the Netherlands. So the Nissan Leaf and the Tesla Roadster. Um, and if you charge your car here, you are being charged during the day by 100% solar power. And that really triggered us because we saw some new business opportunities there. And why was that? because the amount of solar, but also the, the power of solar coming from those solar installations during the day really matched very well with the amount of power and the levels of power these cars can use. So we saw some opportunities there. And um, 
then uh, new partners uh, joined us in helping developing this. The city of Utrecht, but also the economic board of Utrecht, uh, grid operator uh, stayed in, joined, and a very important partner for us in the first stage, uh, Nissan, as a car maker. Um, and what they helped us doing is bring this technology to the next step. And that meant uh, a European first, because this uh, charging station was installed right behind our office, and it was the first one in Europe that could not only charge the car with solar, but also discharge the car and use the battery in the car as storage for renewable energy. And what that did is that for now, nine months a year, when we have enough solar in the Netherlands, we can run our office and our home and our business for 24 hours a day on our own solar power. And there you see another opportunity uh, coming to life. Um, and this first generation Nissan Leaf can only do 100, 120 kilometers on one charge. So you cannot really take out that much power because if you want it also to use to drive, then you still need a lot of power in the battery. But this concept is really uh, developed by having this kind of cars in our head. And this is the Tesla. It can do uh, three to 400 kilometers on one charge. And it has enough power to charge an average Dutch household for two weeks. So that's really a massive amount of power you have in front of you. And you don't need all this power in this battery to do your daily driving. Um, and this Norwegian house we were last summer, um, you can power this house for two months on one charge of this battery. So just to get an idea of the, the amount of power. And because we saw this huge opportunity, we created a new consortium with new partners to bring this concept to a more scalable concept. And that was introduced in June last year, and it was a world's first, a charging station for a public space on international charging standards that can do bidirectional and solar charging. So with this charging station, you can implement everywhere. It is ready for public space. You can also use it in a parking garage. It's uh, a factor two to three cheaper than the blue one. And it's already ready for international charging standards that are being adopted as we speak. And we did this with a consortium uh, of the partners I named before, but we got a new partner called General Electric and Last Mile Solutions. And they really did the technology uh, behind this and were very important in uh, realizing this uh, project. So that was time for a party. This is the Dutch uh, city uh, council uh, opening uh, this charging station. It's a Chinese car which we demonstrated with, the BYD. Um, and there were like 200 people from uh, all over Europe uh, uh, visiting a Nissan uh, conference that was organized around uh, this uh, opening. Um, so we had uh, a small party there. But for us, that was not the end of our project. It was really the beginning of building a new local energy system. So the first thing we did, and we did that uh, the beginning of this year, we installed 20 of those stations in the Lombok area. And the whole idea behind this is to really create a local energy system based on this area. So not only 20 charge stations, but also some new solar. Uh, as we speak, uh, new uh, solar panels are being installed at the gymnasium. So, uh, and every week, uh, also private house owners in the Lombok area are installing uh, solar panels on their roofs. Uh, and we are introducing uh, EVs in a car sharing program. Uh, the Nissan Leaf is also part of a car sharing program. And we want to make uh, uh, electric driving uh, really accessible for everyone. So we will be introducing more and more cars. And by doing that, you really get uh, a neighborhood energy system that can provide a quite a big part of the energy needs of this neighborhood. Uh, so we have now 20 charging stations. And in the coming years, this will evolve to 200 charging stations. We will uh, accelerate the number of solar panels in this area and invite people to join. Um, and we have accounted that approximately 200 uh, cars are needed to power this neighborhood. And to give you an idea, there are almost 2,000 parking spaces available. So, uh, and they're, al they're always completely full in the end of the day. So you need almost like 10% fully electric cars to really get this system going. And if more cars uh, come in, the system will only work better. Um, and it's not our aim to be like autonomous there, to con disconnect from the grid. Um, no, we really see this system getting better when you work together with uh, the whole city. 
And that's exactly what we are doing now. Uh, because right here is the Lombok area with the mill. Um, we are right here in the Jarbers uh, uh, area. So we're really right next to it. But all you see here today will be gone and rebuilt the next 10 years. So the whole area around the central station and the Jarbers will go through a complete transformation. And in this transformation, as part of Healthy Urban Living, which is also one of the themes of this uh, campus party, um, the Jarbers will install 12,000 square meters of solar and uh, build a new parking square for the whole city, not just the Jarbers, with 6,000 uh, parking spaces, of which 3,000 will be electrified. So there you see this small concept we developed in Lombok evolving to maybe an energy powerhouse for the whole city of Utrecht. So what we're doing now, and we will be installing this this summer, is build a small uh, test on the, Lomb uh, on the Jarbers area with 10 uh, charging stations and new solar installed and see how this neighborhood concepts works on uh, Jarbers area because of course the use is different here than in uh, Lombok. And for us it doesn't stop there. I think at the end, this will be a regional uh, energy system because um, the more you work together, the better this concept starts working. So at the end of last year, 15 aldermen from cities around Utrecht and Utrecht itself signed uh, an ambition to build this as a regional energy system uh, to become the first region in Europe to provide a big part of the energy with their own solar powers, 1,000 charging stations like we introduced, and 1,000 cars in a car sharing program, 100% electric. And this is really a concrete ambition we are working on today to realize. And one of the first steps we did in uh, getting there is uh, sign a deal with Renault. Uh, we did that two months ago in Paris uh, as part of a, a visit by the Dutch Queen and King uh, to uh, France. Um, and we signed a deal with Renault that they will provide the Utrecht region with 150, 150 Renault Zoe's which will be part of this car sharing program, and at the same time develop vehicle-to-grid technology in the car. So the car can really match our charging station, and it really becomes one system. And um, the idea is to place those uh, car sharing uh, cars in this region, combined with solar, and really build this new energy system from scratch and show that this could be a part of the future. So this is really what we have been working on. And um, right now, more and more partners are joining in because apparently we have dot, did, did something that uh, is quite unique in the world. Uh, so uh, a lot of automaker, uh, car makers, uh, a lot of uh, in institutions are now uh, joining this project to improve it because there are, of, of course, a lot of uh, factors uh, which you have to deal with. Uh, you have to deal with energy markets, you have to deal with uh, uh, car manufacturing, you have to deal with uh, grid operators, regulations, etc., etc. So we're not doing this alone. We, we got a lot of help from, from a lot of organizations. And why do we so strongly believe in this? And you already heard some stories about this today, uh, but I'm going to share you my vision on it as well. Maybe you know this one. This is a, a new Tesla factory in Nevada, USA. Um, they're building as we speak. Uh, already batteries are being produced there because this will, won't be a, a, a car factory, it will be a battery factory and not just a battery factory. In fact, when this building is ready, it will be one of the biggest buildings in the world and by itself, double the total world production of batteries. So it has an enormous impact on uh, especially uh, storage um, uh, availability. And why are they doing that? because this car is, is quite popular, the Model, Model S. I drive it myself, really nice. Um, just uh, two weeks ago, the, the 5000 uh, Model S was uh, being uh, delivered in the Netherlands, so it's, it's really popular. Um, but they want to build a car that's much more affordable than this one. Um, and by setting this aim, they have really triggered the entire car industry. Um, Nissan Renault, market leader in electric car uh, in the world, has now also announced that they will Per come within two years with an affordable electric car with a range of about 300 kilometers. Uh, GM Bolt already is starting a production for a, a fully electric car with the same uh, uh, range and the same price. Uh, Volkswagen, um, getting out of the, the diesel gate as fast as they can, now have also announced that they will go fully electric and also have a car ready 
at the same uh, features. BYD, maybe you've never heard of this company. Uh, Build your dreams at Stanford. You should look it up because as we speak, they are becoming the world's biggest electric car maker in the world. And why is that? Because they have the Chinese market almost as they are market leader in Chinese markets. And, and at, at, at this point, the Chinese market is really exploding for electric cars. And it's good because they really also have an issue there uh, with their cities and clean air. Um, and of course, you heard the rumors about Apple. Again, this week rumors about Apple maybe investing uh, charging uh, opportunities. Um, they can do the same as Tesla because they are, as Tesla, a Silicon Valley company, very good in integrating hardware and software. But they have one difference. They have almost $300 billion in cash available. And in a very cash intensive market as the car industry, this can really make a difference for everything. So if they really get in, all the car makers that are not really joining this electric revolution uh, will have their Kodak moment. Um, so that's really the future. Um, but then this happened. Two months ago, Tesla launched Model 3. And I was fortunately to be there in LA um, and see this happening and really uh, be a part of this uh, event and also see what was happening right after that because in two weeks time 400,000 people ordered this car unseen and this you, you have to really think about this this is the biggest product launch ever in the history of mankind I mean even Apple has never ever sold this much volume in one or two weeks because we're talking about more than $10 billion of orders Tesla got in in two weeks. No company ever did that. Um, and I was, uh, I actually drove the car as the first Dutch guy. Um, and it's great. I mean, I've been driving the Tesla Model S for three years now. Uh, but this car really has all the technology on board, even improvements on the technology, but then at a price level of $35,000. Uh, dollar. And this is really the auto market where the car makers are making their money. So this car will really sh shake up the market again. But from the energy perspective, it will be the biggest amount of batteries ever being implemented in society. Just imagine, uh, even if there are only like 10,000 of those 400,000 coming to the Netherlands, that's a massive amount of storage available for renewable energy. And that's the way we look at it. Because, as Wim Singh told you in, the, in, the, as, as in, in the, the, the last speech, this is really happening, and it's happening everywhere, not just in the sunny region, but also on my roof. This is my roof. Fifty years ago, I installed my first solar panels. I was actually the first one in Utrecht to give back, on a yearly basis, more power than I use. But last summer, I replaced those panels. And on the same roof, I produce now six-fold six more power just by this technology ever improving and by smarter installations and not only using the south but also east and west and using micro inverters where this, which didn't exist 15 years ago. So this is really, and the, the next 15 years, the same thing will happen. So this is really, um, and I will, will skip this because you all heard about it in the, uh, from Wim, uh, this is really uh, happening everywhere. And if you combine this um, a solar trend with uh, cars getting more smarter and more e also autonomous and solve the problem that I was having driving the Nissan Leaf five years ago, how to charge my car. This car will do that for you in the future. So if you combine those concepts and you combine this uh, concept, was the you really see uh, cars becoming the to uh, a part of uh, a solution when you want to run a society in 100% renewable Imagine energy the because the when the wind is not blowing and the sun is not shining you still want to have this power available and that's really the, the next level of uh, energy transition energy not only step up solar and step up wind but also for provide power when those cars, are not available and we think the cars are grid. not the solution for that but they are a big part of the solution and they will be coming into all of your neighborhoods very soon in large numbers. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Let's take a couple of questions from the audience. Questions? 
Hello. <coughs> My name is Fritz Nolet. Um, you told us that you connected the solar panels on the schools in your neighborhood with your own power cables to your own office. Uh, are you continuing to lay out your own power cables, or will you use the grid companies to do that for you? Uh, good question. Um, when we first told this to the grid company, they were like, uh, well, not really amused. <laughs> and, uh, okay, uh, are you allowed to do that? And I said, well, I just uh, asked for a permit of the city of Utrecht, and they gave me the permit, so nobody told me that I wasn't allowed to do this. Um, but for us, this was really like uh, uh, a hackathon kind of uh, uh, creating our own uh, small uh, test lab. Um, and quite soon, the grid operator uh, really got more enthusiastic and really uh, joined the project and said, okay, we have to be able to do this on our grid as well. Uh, of course, then you have the limitations of regulation, eh, because when you deliver power back to the grid uh, and take it out somewhere else, you have to pay energy taxes, you have to, be, you have, to have a license to deliver energy and all that stuff, and that's really uh, not something you uh, <laughs> will be very happy doing. Uh, I actually I got a license to provide an energy, uh, but if I had known uh, the, the complexity of that, I would never have done it, because it's really a, a nightmare. Um, so uh, we won't roll out this, this uh, power network to the rest of the neighborhood because that's really expensive and you really have to leave that up to the professionals. Uh, of course, we know how to roll out a fiber network, but power networks are really something else. Uh, and we are now really working together with the grid operator and not just uh, state but also the national uh, grid operators uh, working together to get this regulation in order to uh, make this uh, concept even work better because we've got the technology ready we are now getting the cars ready, but then it's really up to regulation to make a business case to really get this system uh, applying. Yeah. Another question over here. Okay, my name is Salvador, and I'm an architect and electrical engineer. I am in love with the electric car, and I have, uh, I have made a reservation of Tesla Model 3 in the first night in a showroom. <laughs> Uh, maybe I have in, in half a year. And I want to ask you something because we have a lot of difficulties in, in Spain. Uh, we, don't, we don't have enough, enough infrastructure. We don't have Tesla in Spain. And um, the laws for solar electricity is, is very bad. It's, it's, very, it's very ugly. Uh, what can uh, we do or what can I do to contribute to the, the sustainable energy in, and sustainable transport in, in Spain. Thank yeah. you. Well, that's a very good thing uh, you did, buying the Tesla Model 3. <laughs> it will be the best car you ever have, I, I promise you. No, no question about it. Um, and it will also help you uh, as an an a part of your answer of your question, because uh, we've spoken to Tesla intensively about this subject, and they are really interested in this whole idea. Um, the Roadster, which was on one of my slides, actually was already able to do vehicle-to-grid. Uh, the Model S is not able to do that because it's really focused on getting a, a, a car into the mass market. Uh, but they are really interested into this concept because, of course, Tesla is not just a car company, but they already have an energy part in their company. And I promise you one day the energy part will be even bigger than the car part of this company. Um, but for especially for Spain, this is really an interesting concept because one of the uh, reasons why it's now so hard for renewables in Spain is because they were suddenly producing so much wind and solar a few years back that the, the grid couldn't handle it anymore. And the interconnections between Spain and the rest of Europe were very poor. I mean, one of the reasons of the success of the German uh, uh, Energiewende is that they have very good interconnections with with uh, all the countries around them. So when they produce too much wind or solar, uh, it just comes to Netherlands, to Netherlands or to Austria, or it goes to uh, the Arctic, uh, the, the Nordic countries. Um, for Spain, that's much harder because there's mostly sea around it, um, and you have to go through the mountains to go to France. Um, they are working on that, but it's much easier to solve this at a local level because that's where the power is produced. So um, I know Tesla is also stepping into the Spanish market slowly, yes. Uh, I was in Barcelona last Christmas because they just opened their first supercharger there so, we could, so we, could get, we could get there. They're rolling out and 
Um, I think it's just what, what you see is that as a consumer, from a consumer point of view, you can really just show how the future looks because that's what we did in Lombok. We just demonstrated that just with your own panels, your own car, you really can manage it yourself and you can make this energy system work. And of course, the regulation and the policy in, in Spain have to follow up, but we have the same problems here. I mean, the Dutch, the Dutch, uh, uh, the Netherlands is really very uh, below on the list of uh, renewable energy uh, in Europe. So we have really uh, other issues that are also frustrating. Um, but just show them how it works, and I think uh, eventually uh, you, we will succeed. Hi, Robin. Walter de Vetter from Mitros. Uh, will electric cars uh, one day uh, be sufficient uh, to um, solve the uh, summer and winter uh, differences? Uh, if so, when, when would it, will this moment be? Um, no. In, in the Netherlands, uh, cars won't be uh, seasonal storage uh, because cars will be used every day and charged and discharged every day. They're really for a 24-hour cycle. Um, but when you look at a winter, in the northern of Europe, there's not much, uh, there, there's just too little sun power available for a lot of parts. Uh, but as we have seen in, in Germany and also in Scandinavia, the wind energy is then uh, compensates quite nicely for that uh, 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 sun power being not available. Um, so, and, and that's how we look at it, because um, if you then look at the grid and you have peaks in the morning or in the evening, um, and during the night there's a lot of wind power, you can again use this car to stabilize the grid. So during the night this car is always parked and you, you can just charge it up with, with wind from Scandinavia or, or, or from uh, the North Sea. And in the morning when the wind disappears or whatever and there's not enough solar to take over, you can use the batteries again to power this neighborhood. So we see this really as uh, this storage concept as a part of a bigger uh, uh, system so it's not the solution for everything, uh, but because it's there right where the people are, right there where the power is being produced, we think it's got a, a, a huge opportunity. Um, cars are not just batteries on wheels, you need to drive them too. Uh, by the way, Tesla also makes batteries, which you just install in your house. Uh, oh, and, and I noticed Tesla is not part of your consortium. You may also explain why that is. Um, but the real question is, uh, if you use cars to stabilize the, the usage of energy, how do you decide how much power you will leave in the car in order to be able to still drive with it? Yeah, good question. Um, well, we look at cars as uh, cars with a minimum of 300 kilometers range. Uh, because, and for example, in the Netherlands, the average uh, commute is like 70 kilometers. So uh, most people don't even use one third of their battery for their daily usage. Of course, if you go to Maastricht or Groningen or to Paris, then you need the whole battery. And together with a company uh, called Jetlix, uh, they have already an app uh, uh, called Smart Charging uh, uh, available um, that helps you organize that. And it's really, really simple. You just said, okay, I want to have uh, half of my battery in the morning always full, filled up to go to work and come home. Um, and by doing that, the other half um, will be available for uh, storage and other, and other features. And by doing that, they really show you how much you earn every day by, do, by, by allowing access to your battery. Um, so that really uh, is a, and it's not enormous amounts of money at this point, but we think when regulation um, comes in order, and when we don't have backup, uh, like in the Netherlands, I mean, we just keep on building coal plants, I don't know why, uh, but when that will stop and they will shut down uh, in five to ten years, and we won't have that backup available, the battery backup will have quite a big value in the energy system. And um, then you will actually, uh, we think, you can actually make uh, so much money by giving access to your battery that you can actually drive for free the rest of your life. So just by... Uh, and, and that's really simple. So uh, you do that uh, for your daily commute, and then w the next day you have to go to Paris or you have to go to uh, Groningen, the north, and then you just flip it to the right and say, okay, I want to have 100% power by the morning. And then you drive away with 400 or, or maybe even more uh, range uh, uh, for start.
from. That's true. how it works. Oh yeah, your, your second question, Tesla and our consortium. Um, well, we, we, we talk a lot with Tesla, but th they are, of course, uh, have quite something to do. I mean, uh, when you think about it, uh, it's quite amazing what they already did. I mean, they are the first car company since World War II to really be successful in the United States. I mean, there have been a lot of entrepreneurs trying to start a car company, and no one succeeded. And they are the first one to succeed. And they really have to focus. That's their main problem. I mean, there are so many things going on, so their main job is to focus. So we talk with them, but they say, okay, let us do our thing. You develop your thing and make sure you do it good. And for sure, we will work together in the future. So that's really how we look at it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm always a bit of hesitate to put a Tesla logo somewhere because uh, everybody's talking to Tesla because they are the hottest company in the world. Um, and I'm, yeah, well, sure, I think. <laughs> Um, j j just uh, ma make, it, make it happen first and then shout about it. That's uh, how we are into this. But uh, we are talking with them and something uh, good will come out of it at the end. Yeah. I, I had also a question. One of the things you were mentioning when you went from solar to solar charging was the business model. Yeah. Uh, what is your business model at the moment for, uh, for your venture? Yeah. Well, for us, it, it started really like a simple because when we deliver the power to the schools, we get like 11 cents per kilowatt hour. When we deliver to the car, we get uh, 25. So that's a doubling of revenues. Of course, then we have to pay a little energy taxes. Um, but th so that's really in the basic, uh, already an improvement of the business case. Are you an energy provider? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do this. So we, we, we are already allowed to do this. Um, but we think that the real business case is in smart charging and doing what I uh, just spoke about, because there is uh, the real profit to be made in combining those things, not just selling power, but really uh, smart selling of power. Hi, uh, I'm Sander, I'm a student uh, at the Vrije Universiteit. Uh, I was wondering, you were talking about um, the issues with regulation um, when starting the company, um, and also Tim Cook talked about that yesterday in her interview with Nelly Cruz. Um, he also said that things had to change in regulation. What's your take on that? Um, yeah, I, I fully agree because, I mean, it's, it's of course a natural role for the government to be behind. I mean, you see it in internet uh, developments, you see it in privacy issues. They're always uh, behind the developments and that's, of course, uh, they can really help it because they are not the technology experts who create this new future. Um, but. In fact, now I, I think it's really important to, um, to get speed in this because as we speak, uh, the Dutch market is really ahead of the rest in Europe with uh, charging infrastructure, with charging uh, protocols, with uh, advanced charging technologies. We are really quite way uh, uh, ahead of the rest. Uh, but Germany just a few weeks ago uh, announced that they will invest 1 billion uh, euros into uh, electric vehicles. So they are getting into this market as we speak. Um, and, not, and the Dutch have quite something to, 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 to export to them. Um, but then the internal market in the Netherlands has to be better than it is right now, for, uh, especially for smart charging and smart solar charging. Um, and right now, if you um, put power in your car and, and take it out later, or you put it in the grid, it will, won't, won't make any difference financially. So there's no business case there yet. Uh, so regulation really has to help that, because uh, otherwise uh, the Germans uh, or the Norwegians will uh, copy what we did and uh, have a better internal market to uh, develop uh, the next step. So I fully agree with uh, Tim Cook. One last question on the other side. And afterwards, there's also an opportunity to speak one-on-one uh, -on, -one on, on the side. Uh, are the environmental benefits from the electric cars higher than the, um, uh, the cost for the environment in order to accept the battery that are off? Yeah. And it's also the question for uh, solar panels and solar energy, that's yeah. therefore. Yeah, well, if, if you really look at the environmental impact, I mean, uh, of an uh, electric car compared to a, uh, uh, gasoline car and just producing it, not uh, uh, using it, but just a production, um, there's not even that much difference. So uh, just by choosing those uh, two. Um, 
But in the usage, there is really where the electric car is far, far better, of course, than the gasoline car when it comes to um, CO2 uh, uh, emissions, but especially in cities uh, regarding uh, uh, clean air. Um, so that's also one of the reasons why uh, this concept is also the city of Utrecht, but also the region of Utrecht is really investing in this project because uh, Utrecht really has not as much as Chinese cities, but also has quite big issues with, with just getting clean air. We are in the middle of the country. All this traffic is going around this. Uh, we are the Dreischijf, uh, what it's called. Um, so um, a lot of traffic comes by the city that do doesn't even go here. So that's really an issue for this, this region. Uh, and I think it's an issue for all major urban areas to get their clean uh, to get clean air and that's really why we need electrical cars uh, to help us there um, and when you do good recycling of batteries or reuse them in second life uh, which is happening already um, and for example tesla says that uh, when this uh, new factory of there will be operational uh, there will uh, it will have a zero uh, impact on the environment because everything will be recycled all uh, uh, batteries uh, will be completely reused um, so of course we have to really manage and monitor that 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 this will be done well um, because you can also do very bad things with batteries um, and just uh, uh, if, I mean if you dump them somewhere it really can cause a lot of problems uh, and of course in the future this will happen and then everyone will say yeah you see the electric cars are shit um, so mind those headlines because of course they will will come up um, mostly funded by the fossil industry <laughs> but um, at the end this is really where it's going and uh, we have to produce it and uh, I think this will be the future will we see you in China next year maybe okay. <laughs> thank you very much for the speech it was very inspiring if you have more questions uh, Robin will be standing over there you can ask him more it's been a very uh, fascinating to see how you took it from zero to uh, 4,000 and, and growing. We have a little gift for you, uh, special campus party gift. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you. So one more thanks, and yeah. if you have any questions, uh, okay. you'll be Thank standing there. Thank you very much. There. Yeah. Take it.